Hello world, Calc Programmer one here. Just wanted to do a little quick video on something I got in the mail today. Uh, this is the JSOX Clear Edition back cover for the Steam Deck. And they sent this to me because uh, I had been talking with one of their uh, people about supporting their upcoming RGB dock on OpenRGB. Um, the dock unfortunately got postponed, but they wanted to get it supported in OpenRGB, and they were willing to send me one, but unfortunately they had some setbacks, and the product's been delayed, so no update from them there. But they did send me this, just kind of out of the blue, um, and I've seen other YouTubers uh, get one of these and open it up, so I just figured I'd take a look at mine uh, and see what they did, because... I know on some people they had customized this back cover, so I'm interested to see what they did to mine if they did anything. Uh, I didn't even I didn't ask for this. They just kind of said, "Hey, we sent you one," and just around the same time that they sent sent that, my Steam Deck actually had issues, and I had to send it in for RMA. So I don't know if I'm going to be installing this right away because this is like a week old Steam Deck now, less than a week old. Uh, because this has just come back from RMA, um, and I don't want to mess it up when it's practically brand new. But I did take the back cover off of my old one, so I know how to install it, and just I want to keep it fresh for a little bit longer, I think. But the one thing I am curious about is I would sort of like to do an RGB mod on the Steam Deck, and with this being a clear plastic shell... You could easily put some LEDs inside the Steam Deck, some LED strips, wire them up to like an Arduino Micro or Arduino Nano, and then somehow find a way to connect that Nano to the Steam Deck's motherboard. Uh, I did some brief investigation looking at uh, pictures of the motherboard and the cables inside, and I believe there's an I2C interface on this little audio PCB up here that's uh, actually connected to the light sensor on the front of the PCB or on the front of the screen, the ambient light sensor, because I found the ambient light sensor as an I squared C device. So we could possibly tap into that and rig up an RGB controller that operates very similarly to my PinePhone keyboard RGB controller, which also uses an I squared C interface. But that's a project for another day because, like I said, brand new Steam Deck. I don't really want to go hacking on it right away anyways. But let's see what's in the box. So I've already cut the box open. But we just get... This says, please wear finger gloves. So that's what's come in the little accessory kit here. Uh, screwdriver, uh, pry tool to take the back cover apart. And it looks like a new set of screws. And yeah, I guess they're in little individual bags to tell you which screws are which. That's very nice to see. That uh, looks like a pretty well done little toolkit. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything in this. It is, uh, there is some tape on here on both sides. So. Go ahead and just use our screwdriver here to uh, break the tape. Oh, uh, okay. So I've seen these on another review. They give you a bunch of different options for the back buttons. So. The default Steam Deck has these uh, back buttons that are kind of flat, and they're maybe not the most comfortable to press. And so, JSOX was giving you um, these little expanded looking ones that have these little tabs on them. That's kind of cool. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to actually use those or not, but it's interesting to see. Maybe I'll try them out. Um, But the interesting part is going to be the shell itself, because I was interested to see how this feels in comparison to the real Steam Deck back cover. 
Uh, I have one on my Switch that I put on, a clear purple one, but it's like a very smooth, transparent, and it doesn't feel... It feels almost kind of cheap compared to the official back cover that's kind of got a like a matte finish to it. So I wanted to see how this one turned out, if it has that same matte finish or not. And so... And then, of course, I want to see if they put anything on that little metal plate. And it looks like they did. They gave me an open RGB label on there. And that is cold metal. I just got this out of the mailbox. It's been sitting there all day, so and it's snowing outside. But that's pretty nice to see. It's flush with the back of the, the case. And it looks like it's raised it looks like they got a little thermal pad there to contact the heat spreader like metal cover that's over top of the whole motherboard. So it doesn't contact the CPU directly. It covers like the metal shield that's over the entire motherboard. But that should get some more heat out. That's cool. Um otherwise the plastic feels good. They have some little brass inserts here. Uh, and the texture on this actually feels really nice. It's uh, like a matte, rough surface. And if we compare it to the real Steam Deck. Actually, the feel is pretty close. So uh, that feels really good. I think they've done a good job. Um, like they've got the little lines on the hand grips. They're pretty nice. Um, they've got the vent kind of, it looks like they've got the same kind of mesh over the vent. And then you can install whichever rear buttons you want from the little accessory kit they give you. So, like I said, I'm not going to install it right away, but I did want to check it out. And I figure I will eventually try to do an RGB mod on the Steam Deck. Uh, maybe after I've given this one a little bit more of a go, make sure that there are no issues with it. Um, and I do want any mod I do to be reversible, so that if I do end up having to send it back in, I can just take the other cover off, remove any mods that I put in, put the back cover on, and put it back to its stock configuration. So, um, so yeah, that's all I wanted to share today, and also just test my new recording setup. I did get a, a HyperX uh, mic, and I'm using a new 4K webcam that I got, so hopefully I can get a little bit better sound in my videos. Um, and so yeah, I was having issues with my phone cutting off 4K recording after 10 minutes, so that was getting annoying. So I got a uh, camera, and I'm running all this through OBS on Linux. So we'll see how it goes. But anyways, thanks for watching.